Number one so asks us to select all equations for which negative three is a solution. Um, so we're just gonna be plugging it in for X and seeing if it equals out to this right-hand side. So in this um, first one, okay, we're just gonna do the negative three squared. So that negative three is going in for the X and then we're squaring it. So really what this is, is negative three times negative three and negative three times negative three is positive nine. So it's a solution here. So negative three squared is not negative nine since it's positive nine. So B would be false. For C and D, we're looking at um, doing X cubed. So we're looking at um, doing negative three cubed. And when we do negative three cubed, that just means negative three times itself three times. So negative three times negative three times negative three. And negative three times negative three is positive nine. Okay, so this part is positive nine. And then nine times negative three is negative 27. So negative three cubed is negative 27. So C would be false, it's not a solution there, but it is a solution to part D. Um, then E has us doing negative X squared. And so we'll be plugging in the negative three here. And so we're just squaring the negative three. So we're gonna have the negative three times itself. So negative three times negative three in the middle here. And negative three times negative three is positive nine. And then we have the opposite of positive nine. So this is equal to negative nine. So E is false because we have negative three squared is nine with the negative would be negative nine. For part F, we're taking the opposite of X and squaring it, okay? And so then in this case, X is negative three. So the opposite of negative three is what we'll do first. And the opposite of negative three is three then we'll square it. So then we're gonna get three times three, which is positive nine. So F, um, negative three is a solution to part F. Number two, use the graph of the cube root of X to estimate the solutions to the following equations. So we wanna figure out what X value would give us a Y value of two. So let me just plot this Y equals two line. So the y equals two line is here. So we just wanna see where that crosses our cube root function. And so we're just estimating. So we're looking here and then we're looking down. So we see that this is 30, okay? And this is like maybe a fourth of the way there. Um, so maybe it looks like it's, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine. And remember, it's just an estimate. So yours can be different than mine. Um, part two, we want to estimate the cube root of negative 4.5. So negative 4.5, um, is about here. So halfway between negative four and negative five. And so then we'll just, um, make a guess here. And so it looks like it's crossing a little bit, um, maybe about at negative 90. And again, if yours is slightly different, that's fine. And then this final one asks us to estimate um, where it would be 3.75, so a little bit closer to four, so a little bit more than halfway. And then checking where that crosses, so it's crossing about here. Um, so maybe, I don't know, it looks like it's a little bit more than halfway. Halfway would be 45, so maybe like 55 or so, maybe a little bit less than that. So then it says, using um, the meaning of cube root, find the exact solution to each equation. So remember the opposite of cube rooting is cubing. So the cube root of X equaling two means that two cubed would equal X and two cubed is eight. So then I got the exact answer for that one. Okay, so over here, um, X would equal negative 4.5 cubed. 
and negative 4.5 cubed is negative 91.125. And my guess was negative 90, so I was pretty close. And then on this last one, um, x would equal 3.75 cubed. And 3.75 cubed is 52.73. So again, pretty close on my estimate of 55. Number three, which are the solutions to the equation x cubed equals negative 125? So remember, solutions would have to equal, both sides would equal. So here, if I do 5 cubed, 5 cubed is positive 125, so that's not a solution, which means both 5 and negative 5 can't be if 5 wasn't. Um, negative 5 cubed, remember, is negative 5 times negative 5, which is positive 25, and then times negative 5 again, which would be negative 125. So negative 5 is a solution, meaning it can't be D saying the equation has no solutions. Number four, complete the table using powers of 16 in the top row and then radicals or rational numbers in the bottom. So remember, we know that if it's a fraction, okay, then we can move the base up to the top and make the exponent negative. So 16 to the first power was on bottom. So 16 to the negative one would be the same as that. Um, so then let's take a look at this next one then. So if we move this down, so this is going to be 1 over 16 to the positive 3 fourths. Okay, and then remember that this can be written as a root. So this is the fourth root of 16 and then cubed. Well, 2 times itself 4 times is 16. So 16 is really 2 to the fourth. So if we fourth root 16, we're going to get 2, and then we still have that cubed. So this part, let me do a different color. So this part is equal to 2, and then we still have cubed. And um, 2 cubed is 8. So 16 to the negative 3 fourths is 1 eighth. Um, so then 16 um, 4 is the square root of 16. So for this next one, um, if we have it, we could have it written as 1 over square root of 16 instead, which is the same as 1 over 4. And then we could put this back into a fractional exponent. So remember, 16 to the 1 half would be the same as the square root of 16. And then when we bring this to the top, we would make that exponent negative. And then 16 to the negative 1 fourth would be the same as 1 over the fourth root of 16 because we'd bring that um, fourth root to the bottom. So let me actually just write this um, as 1 over 16 to the 1 fourth. So then writing that as a radical would be the fourth root of 16, which we talked about here is just 2. So this is really 1 over 2. And then anything to the 0 power is 1. So 16 to the 0 would be 1. Number 5, which are the solutions to the equation the square root of x equals negative 8? Well, anytime you square a number, it's going to be positive. So we cannot get the square root to be negative. So a square root can never equal a negative number, so this equation has no solutions. Whoops, I don't know why I crossed it off then. That is the answer, sorry. So these ones are bad. Number six, find the solutions to each equation, explain or explain why there's no solution. So let's isolate the variable by subtracting six to both sides. So we'll get x squared equals 49, and then we'll square root both sides. And remember, when you do the square root, there's two solutions because both um, 7 and negative 7 squared will give you that positive 49. So x equals the plus or minus square root of 49, which I said was 7. Next one. 
Um, we'll subtract 16 from both sides, and then we'll get x squared equals negative 16. This has no solution um, because you can't multiply a number by itself and get a negative number because a negative times a negative will be a positive, and also a positive times a positive will be a positive. So any number times itself is going to equal a positive solution. So no solution to this. Here we'll add 3.25 to both sides to isolate the x squared. So then we'll get x squared. This is 0. And then this would be 25. And so we'll square root both sides again here. And we know that there's two solutions, both a positive and a negative solution. Um, and the square root of 25 is 5. So both 5 and negative 5 are solutions to this.